Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to the review of the Manchester Watch Works Rattler. A really unusual little offering. Unusual for a couple of different reasons. The first is that the case is made of titanium. This is the first titanium watch that I have had the pleasure of reviewing on the channel. The second is that it's a Seiko homage. Now that is not in and of itself unusual. I've looked at two Seiko homages already on the channel. The first was a 6105 homage. The second was a 62MAS homage both of those original Seikos coming from the 1960s. What's unusual about this Rattler is that it's an homage to a Seiko from the mid 1990s. Now the Rattler is currently live on Kickstarter. It's very modest target already reached and breached some time ago. I'll leave a link in the description to the Kickstarter campaign. But let's flip the camera and get a look at this rather odd little watch. A rather odd fish today then. I'm going to do all the usual stuff, dimension specifications, movement accuracy report, loom shot, wrist shot, etc, etc. But before I start with that, I better tell you what this is an homage to. Now, I'll pop up a picture here. As you can see, it's pretty much identical. This is an homage to a Seiko SUS 4S15 military. Now, I sound like I know what I'm talking about, but I'd never heard of this watch, to be honest. Released in 1996, Seiko's attempt to appeal to a younger market, and as you can see, Manchester Watchworks have pretty much copied and pasted the design. Few little changes, change of material, change of dimensions and so on, but in essence, this one remains very true to the original. One noticeable difference, however, is a change in diameter. This one measures 37 millimeters as opposed to the original's diminutive 35 millimeters. So slightly modernizing the dimensions, but not too much. 20 millimeter lug width. We've got a thickness of just about 12 millimeters today. Lug tip to lug tip of only 46. So wears very, very compactly. And as you can see, they're drilled lugs, bringing that effectively inboard by about one mil either side. Now I mentioned in the intro, this one is titanium, as you can see there lovely titanium color and that kind of different finishing, very, very different from the look that you get from stainless steel. This one weighing in on the supplied nylon NATO strap at a mere 63 grams. So really compact, lightweight little kind of military field watch today. Let's get the NATO off then and have a look at the case. First time I've encountered titanium, lovely finish, very nice indeed. The original apparently had a kind of pre-stressed finish. I'll pop up a shot just there. You can see how similar this one is to the original. This one doesn't have that distressed look, but it kind of compensates by having the titanium. You get a nice kind of uh, a dull finish to it, just what you want from a field watch. You don't want this one glinting away at all. Nice Manchester Watchworks logo on the crown, plenty of grip from that little crown also. Something a little bit different on the case back as well today. So screw down case back, giving this one 100 meters of water resistance, which is pretty decent considering the style of watch it is. You can probably see there a decorated rotor of a Seiko NH35. I'll get into that in just a moment. Sapphire Crystal advertising the titanium and a little picture of the rattler there. Though as has been pointed out in the comments, rattlesnakes don't tend to rear uh, more a cobra than a rattler. But anyway, that's branding for you. That's marketing for you. You've got to take liberties where you can and zoomed right in on the dial, you can see the little Rattler logo emblazoned just above the six. Again, very much in keeping with the original, three o'clock crown, but we've got the date window tucked next to the four o'clock Arabic there. So again, a nice kind of uh, complex, but simple at the same time field aesthetic on the dial there. Arabic's all the way around the inside. We've got a, a our batons and a minute track around the outside. And on the chapter ring, we break that down into the fifth of a second, just adding a little bit of depth there. Printed dial though today, no depth on the dial itself. And we've got a bit of sunburst effect on the silver. Again, silver and black, the two choices with this one, very much like the original Seiko. So it is appropriate then that this Rattler uses a Seiko automatic movement like the original. It's surprise, surprise to NH35 as mentioned. There's a reason these are so popular though. Look at that accuracy report. That's over a week. Make sure of in the winder on the wrist, but you know, I'm constantly amazed at these little Seiko movements. There is an argument that you really don't need anything else in your watch, especially not when it comes in at pretty much spot on after a week of running. Hacks, hand winds, 24 jewels, 42 hour 
power reserve, all the usual info on the NH35. Now pop up a loom shot. Now this is the silver dial version. Both feature Superluminova BGW9. I'd be tempted to go for the black dial version, probably because it has slightly superior loom. The problem is that the silver dial one, they have to mix the black pigment for the numerals in with the loom. So you don't get quite the same potency that you do with the black dial, but again, not too bad. Certainly a sufficient amount of loom for this style of timepiece. And there is the watch on my seven inch wrist. Looks quite cute, but feels quite chunky. Certainly feels like a robust little thing as it should do given the materials from which it is constructed. Now, this is the supplied NATO strap, seat belt nylon. I think it's my first encounter with one of these seat belt nylon NATOs. And it's not what I was expecting at all. It's soft, it's supple, it's very, very nice on the wrist. I've never really settled with NATO straps myself, but I think this is a good choice in terms of the aesthetic for this little rattler. And I think it's a, a quality item as well. And as you can see there, the hardware matches the watch perfectly, as you would expect. But a nice little thing on the wrist. I'll maybe zoom the camera out a little bit. So there we are for perspective, zoomed a little further out letting you know what that 37 millimeters looks like on my seven inch wrist, as mentioned. I think it looks pretty good. Doesn't sit too high, I think because it's only 12 mil thick originally and NATO slips nicely underneath it. But yeah, very much in keeping with the aesthetic of the original. I like that color matching between the titanium and that pale green on the strap also. Moans and niggles then. Well, not too many really. And if I did have any moans and niggles, I'm not sure whether to direct them at Manchester Watchworks or Seiko. I mean, it really is pretty much a, a port and copy of the, the original Seiko from 1996. I mean, I guess my only concern is that you're getting close to Hamilton prices with this one. There are a few spaces left on the Kickstarter at 250 US. Thereafter, it'll be going to 270 US. But I guess it's a special interest piece, this one. If you're a fan of the Seikos, these originals uh, can run you well over $1,000 for a decent one. And again, you probably wouldn't wear a $1,000 vintage Seiko the same way that you would wear a brand new homage. So I kind of get it. They've modernized the watch a little bit in terms of the materials used, the titanium, the sapphire crystal, the hacking hand winding automatic, and yet they've kept very much the ethos of the original Seiko with this one. So there you have it, the Rattler by Manchester. Watch works then. Bit of a specialty piece. This one, I'm guessing, is gonna find its own niche in the market, but it's an homage to a Seiko that most people won't, to be honest, have heard of. However, titanium case, sapphire crystal, Seiko automatic, and a Kraken NATO strap gives this watch its own set of appeals. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.